Welcome, dear viewer. In this supplement to the series, we'll be calculating the distance to the Sun using nothing more than a few accurate observations, some trigonometry, vectors, and simple algebra. Some geocentrists claim that the simple mathematics of parallax somehow don't work when it disagrees with their holy book. One such example is fundamentally dishonest Bible Gimp and Golden Crocoduck nominee Phony Boy 100. In his latest video, he claims that we can't know the distance to the Sun, as if geometric principles mysteriously stop working when they become inconvenient. Cassini and his colleague Richet made the first proper job of calculating the distance to the Sun. Cassini stayed in Paris and Richet went to Cayenne in French Guyana. They calculated the distance to Mars from their two vantage points using parallax when Mars was at opposition. The distance to the Sun could then be derived as the size of Mars' orbit relative to Earth's was known by Kepler's third law. Cassini's result was accurate to within about 7%. Not bad for 1672. In this worked example, we'll also use the opposition of Mars. The next one is on the 8th of April 2014, so we'll use that. Why an event in the future? Firstly, it demonstrates the predictive power of what fundamentalist morons like to call false science. It'll provide a stark contrast to their total inability to either model reality or predict it. Secondly, two people with access to decent telescopes will be able to follow along and do their own measurements using this as an example. Like Cassini, we'll measure Mars position from two locations at the same time. We'll use points on the equator for no other reason than to simplify the mathematics and diagramming of this example. We'll need a coordinate system, so we'll use the Greenwich Meridian as our y-axis, and set up a perpendicular x-axis, with the origin being the centre of Earth, labelled E. We'll have Alice in Gabon, Africa, at 0 degrees north, 10 degrees east. Our second observer will be Bob in Brazil, at 55 degrees west. Measurements will be made at midnight UTC on the night of the 8th of April 2014. This is a few hours after opposition, but it's more than good enough for our purposes. We only need three measurements for our distance calculations, but Alice and Bob will both take them. We need the right ascension of Mars from their locations. We need the local sidereal time of each observation. And we need to measure the angular size of Mars at the time of observation. Using their measurements, we'll work out the angle subtended by their observations of Mars. We'll work out a vector from Alice to Bob and the straight line distance between them. We'll work out a vector from Alice to Mars. And we'll work out the angle subtended by that vector and the vector from Alice to Bob, giving us the angle A. Using the law of signs, we'll calculate the distance from Bob to Mars. With that, we will then calculate the distance from Earth to the Sun using Kepler's third law and some simple algebra. While we're at it, let's also calculate the size of the Sun. For that, Alice and Bob will also need to measure the angular size of the Sun using a safe technique. First, some notes on terminology. Sidereal time divides one sidereal rotation of Earth into 24 hours. These are not the same as mean solar hours of the 24-hour clock we use day to day. One hour of sidereal time corresponds to 15 degrees of rotation. Right ascension is the angular distance in sidereal hours, minutes and seconds measured eastward from the point of the vernal equinox on the celestial sphere. An observer's local sidereal time is the right ascension value at his local meridian. Note that minutes and seconds of sidereal time when used to measure angles are not the same as arc minutes and arc seconds that we've seen before. You'll see sidereal measurements indicated with H, M and S, and we'll convert them as necessary. At the time of observation, Alice captures an image of Mars and measures its right ascension to be 13 hours, 13 minutes and 29.92 seconds. Bob captures his image of Mars at the same time he measures its right ascension to be 13 hours, 13 minutes, and 30.85 seconds. To calculate angle M, we need the difference between Alice and Bob's right ascension values. This comes out as 0.93 seconds. This gives us an angle M of 0.003875 degrees. Now we need a vector from Alice to Bob. We can get this by adding the X and Y components of the vectors AE and EB. 
If we let the lengths of our vectors be measured in Earth radii, the lengths are 1. The x component of AB is then sine 10 plus sine 55. The y component is cos 55 minus cos 10, because the vector AB slopes down from left to right. This gives vector AB as 0.992800 minus 0.411231. To get the length of the vector, we use Pythagoras' theorem, so the length of AB is 1.074599 Earth radii. OK, now we need to head to working out a vector from Alice towards Mars. First, we need to know the angle at which Alice observed Mars. The extended line, EA, corresponds to Alice's meridian. The local sidereal time of her observation was 13 hours, 48 minutes and 39.27 seconds. This is the right ascension of objects along her meridian. Alice observed Mars at 13 hours, 13 minutes and 29.92 seconds. The difference between the two is the angle alpha A. This is 35 minutes and 9.35 seconds. Converting this to degrees, we get alpha A equal to 8.788958 degrees. Now we need the angle of the line AM relative to our coordinate system's y-axis. This is simply Alice's longitude of minus 10 degrees, plus the angle she observed Mars to be at, alpha A. This gives an angle, theta A, of minus 1.211042 degrees. Now that we have this, we can get a unit vector in the direction AM. Remember a unit vector has a length of 1, so this vector will simply be sine theta A cos theta A, which works out as minus 0.028310, 0.999599 We need the angle between the two vectors AB and AM, which we'll call A. The cosine of the angle between two vectors is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the lengths of them multiplied. To get the dot product of two vectors, we just multiply like components and add them up. So AB, AM is sine theta A times sine 10 plus sine 55 plus cos theta a times cos 55 minus cos 10. We calculated the length of AB earlier. We made AM a unit vector, so its length is 1. Plug these values in and the cosine of angle A is minus 0.402124. A therefore is 113.711042 degrees. We now have the angle M, the angle A and the length AB. We have everything we need to use the sine law to calculate BM. The sine law states that AB over sine M equals MB over sine A. Rearranging this, MB equals AB sine A over sine M. Plug in the numbers we've calculated, crunch them out, and we find that MB is 14,547.761 Earth radii. Incidentally, you can work further from here and work out the distance ME if you really want to, but it's the same to around a dozen decimal places, so we'll move on. Earth's equatorial radius is 6,378.1 kilometers, so the distance to Mars at the 2014 opposition works out to be 92,787,076.973 kilometers. We'll call this distance Z from now on. Alice and Bob also measure the angular diameter of Mars at the time of their observations. They measure it to be 15.16 arc seconds. Looking at measurements from previous Mars oppositions, we see that the angular diameter varies on a cyclic basis. The distance between Earth and Mars is different at each opposition. Mars will appear largest at opposition when it is at perihelion, and smallest when at aphelion. The line between aphelion and perihelion of an orbit is its major axis. Kepler's third law allows us to work out the semi-major axis. P squared equals A cubed, where P is the sidereal period of the orbit in Earth years, and A is the semi-major axis in astronomical units. 1 AU is the distance from Earth to the Sun. The semi-major axis, A, is the cube root of P squared. For Mars, its orbital period is 1.8808 Earth years, so its semi-major axis works out to be 1.523685 AU. Let's say Earth's orbit is a circle of radius R, where R is 1 AU and the distance we're trying to find. The major axis of Mars' orbit is 2A, and this is equal to 2R, plus the Earth-Mars distance when Mars is at perihelion, which we'll call D1, 
plus the Earth-Mars distance when it's at aphelion, which we'll call d2. We know what a is in terms of r, so we can substitute that in to get 2 times 1.523685r minus 2r equals d1 plus d2, or 1.04737r equals d1 plus d2. We don't know either of those, so it's back to our graph of angular sizes of Mars at opposition and the data behind it. The maximum diameter of 25.11 arc seconds is when Mars is at its closest to Earth. It's representative of Mars being at distance d1. The smallest angular diameter is 13.83 arc seconds, almost half the apparent size. It's representative of Mars being at distance d2. Although we don't know d1 and d2, there's a straightforward relationship between distance and an object's apparent size. Something twice as far away appears half the size. So we can work out the ratio between them. d2 is 25.11 over 13.83 times larger than d1. d2 then is 1.815618 d1. Substituting into the previous formula, we find that 1.04737R equals 2.815618D1. Great, but we know Z. Not a problem. We also know Alice and Bob measured the angular diameter of Mars to be 15.16 arc seconds. So, just as we worked out the ratio of D2 to D1, we can say that Z is 25.11 over 15.16D1, which is 1.656332D1. D1, then, is Z over 1.656332. Since we know Z is 92,787,077 kilometers, this gives us a value for D1 of 56,019,612.597 kilometers. Plug this into our formula, equating R with D, and we find that 1.04737R equals 2.815618 times 56,019,612.597. Rearrange to find R, and it's 150,599,462 kilometers. It seems then that we can know the distance to the Sun using nothing more than a few accurate measurements by two observers, some basic geometry and algebra. It's also apparent that the claims of Bible-thumping conspirators who desperately cling to the scrawlings of scientifically illiterate camel rimmers as if they had any bearing on reality are simply talking shit, and that geocentrism is, and always has been, bollocks. Earlier that day, Alice and Bob measured the angular diameter of the Sun using safe observing techniques. They find it to have an angular diameter of 32 arc minutes and 13.6 arc seconds, or 0.537 degrees. Using more simple geometry, we can calculate the size of the Sun using our old friend the bog standard tangent formula. The Sun has an angular diameter alpha at a distance r, which we now know. We can see that the tangent of alpha over 2 will be equal to half the diameter of the Sun divided by r. Rearranging this, we find that the diameter d is 2r tan alpha over 2. Plug in the numbers, and we get a diameter for the Sun of 1,411,783 kilometers. The accepted value is 1,392,684 kilometers. So, with simple observations, Alice and Bob have got an answer that's accurate to within 1.4%. Not bad for something that's supposedly impossible. The infantile claims of geocentrists that things in space are closer than we're told, and smaller than we're told, are demonstrably garbage. Consequently, every pathetic claim that geocentrists base on these premises is also wrong. This is hardly surprising, though, because geocentrism is total bollocks. We've known the distance to the Sun with increasing accuracy for over 300 years. Geocentritards, however, still can't present any actual data. They're left with small-minded claims of delusions sent by their Sky Daddy, and a holy book with vague, childish descriptions of the cosmos. As the series continues, we'll discover even more ways of knowing why the scientific method tells us far more about the universe than fundamentalist idiocy. See you then.